Hey, Bill Camerata, Bill's Box of Sound. Back in 2011, I made a video unboxing and demonstration video of the Spin Clean Record Washing System, which has become my most watched video on my YouTube channel. The two versions that I've posted here have been viewed over 160,000 times. Now, recent conversations with fellow VC members has shown me that uh, people still think that I'm cleaning my records in the exact same way six years later. All contrary, my friends. I still use the spin clean, but my methods have changed a lot over the years, and that's what I'm going to show you today. Now, first of all, this is only what I do to clean my records. This is not necessarily the best way to clean records, but this process works for me. I'd love to go out and buy a VPI, an Okinoki, or a nitty gritty vacuum record cleaning machine, uh, but for me, this method works for me, and that means I don't have to put up with that noisy vacuum sound uh, and doesn't require a big investment, but more about that later. So here's what I do. First of all, the hardware. First, an old turntable. This is a Technique's SLBD22 that I garbage picked and cleaned up. It's got the belt disengaged so I don't damage the motor, and I don't even plug it in, so I turn it by hand. Number two, a fingernail brush. Buy a new fingernail brush to use for records only. Don't use the same one that you've used on your fingers. Number three, an absorbent rag. This does not have to be a microfiber towel. A simple terry cloth will do. Just make sure it starts out clean. Wash it before you use it. <laughs> Number four, the trusty old spin clean record washer. This is still part of my process and I'll show you how it is. I use it a little bit differently than what's originally intended. Number five, two squeeze bottles for cleaning liquids. You can get these at craft stores, art supply stores, or even restaurant supply stores. Or heck, <laughs> department stores even carry these. Number six, a dish drying rack and something to catch the drops off of the record underneath. Number seven, one of the drying cloths from the Spin Clean Record Washer. And lastly, number eight, a circulating fan. Now, this one you can buy for $20 or so at like a, a Target or a Walmart store. Uh, since I've bought these, they've come out with newer models that are 20% quieter. So, this has even improved since I've started doing it. Next, we have the liquids. Number one, enzymatic cleaner. This stuff is Vinyl Zyme Gold. It's a concentrated uh, bottle that I bought from Todd the Vinyl Junkie. This costs about 50 bucks for a two ounce bottle, but it'll last you a long time. It's lasted me a long time, and uh, oops, I got a couple of drops here which have stained the label, but uh, this lasts you a very long time. Number two, the cleaning fluid that came with the Spin Clean Record Washer. Yes, I still use this stuff, but I don't use it in the same way that I used to. You will find out how soon. Number three, Everclear Grain Alcohol. Don't drink this crap. It's bad for you. But it's very good for cleaning. Okay, now... Uh, this is not legal in all states, so if you have isopropyl alcohol, 90% or better, you can use that instead. Now, if you're going to be cleaning old 78 records, don't use this stuff because it'll disintegrate the shellac on the old 78s. Number four, we've got distilled water. This is cheap, and this is what you use the most of, but for a gallon, you pay a buck for it in the majority of stores. You can get it in any grocery store, department store. And the last ingredient, number five, is a surfactant. I use Triton X100. It's a chemical, it's not easy to find, but you can find 100 milliliters for about 10 bucks on Amazon. Now, you will need the smallest amount of this, but it makes all the difference in the world. A bottle of this stuff should last you forever. But unfortunately, the shelf life of this is only about two years at room temperature. So if you've got some friends that are also record collectors and they want to go in and split the cost of a bottle with you, you'll end up spending less 
and, wa and wasting less. I mean, I'm sorry, yeah, spending less and wasting less. But then again, you may just be one of those weird mad scientists and uh, you just want to get the bottle all to yourself. Okay, on to the prep. For the deep cleaning mixture, the heavy duty record cleaning fluid, you start with the enzymatic cleaner. Now for a six ounce bottle like this, I use like 30 to 50 drops of this stuff. It's about half a teaspoon. So just get this in here, give it a little squirt. Now, when you're done with this, the fluid will have a little bit of a brown tinge to it, but uh, not as heavy as soup broth. Next, let's take the spin clean record cleaning fluid and get two capfuls of about this, which is about half a tablespoon. Trust me, in moderation, this stuff is good for your records. So let's put, whoa, one, two capfuls in there. Next, you add an ounce of the Everclear alcohol. Kind of like a shot, almost a shot, a little bit less than a shot. Pour that in there. It's all good. Take your distilled water and fill the container almost to the top. I'm going to have to do this off camera. Now fill it up almost to the top because you're going to need just a little bit of room to mix this stuff around with. See, that's got a little bit of a color to it. Now, take the Triton X100. I put mine in a little drip bottle so I can count the drops and put one drop per ounce, okay? Now, this is a six ounce bottle. Six drops will be more than enough. Be stingy with this stuff. Don't use too much of it. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And wash your hands when you're done using that stuff. You don't want to know what can happen to your hands. So now put the top on. Make sure the top is covered and mix it up like that. That's your heavy duty record cleaning fluid right there. Now, for your light cleaning or your rinsing fluid, you only need two ingredients. One is the distilled water, which we've already showed you, and which I've already filled up almost to the top. The other ingredient is once again, your Triton X100 surfactant. Two drops only. Trust me on this one. Okay, or one drop, two drops. Some people prefer to use straight distilled water and nothing else. Hey, that's up to you, but this works for me. So then you put the top on, get yourself a little cap, and roll it around to mix it. Don't shake it because there will be bubbles. Now we get to the spin clean record cleaning machine. Got your rollers right here and you got your distilled water. Now the spin clean folks recommend, let me just grab my liquid here. <clears throat> the spin clean folks recommend that you use three capfuls of this stuff and you put it over the brushes, but I use one cap full only in here because this is part of our rinsing. Then fill it up to the line with distilled water. Now all you got to do is slip these brushes in. There we go. And it's time to rock and roll. Okay, now what I'm about to show you is what I do for any used album that I'm deep cleaning for the first time. Let's take a look at this one here. It's, it's got noticeable dirt on it. Let's see, yeah, you can see that on the camera. It doesn't look that good. 
Uh, it's got dust, it's got fingerprints. Uh, it did have some hair on it, but I wiped that off. Now, once you clean a record this way, you will most likely never have to wet clean it again. The only other cleaning that you do is with a carbon fiber brush every time you play a record. And I've made a video about my carbon fiber brush cleaning already. So take your record, place it on the platter or the cleaning surface that you've chosen and put some heavy duty cleaner on it. Um, I get this thing spinning and I like put one re revolution of, of cleaner around it. And then I take the fingernail brush. Sometimes I uh, pre-wet it with just a little bit of uh, distilled water so it'll spread the stuff easier. Now this cleaner with the surfactant in it, the surfactant makes the fluid seep into the grooves and get all the way to the bottom of the grooves. And the enzymatic cleaner will help dissolve any mold or dirt that has gone into this. Because, you know, in some cases you'll be cleaning records that are 30, 40, even 50 years old, and you want to get this off. Now, brush in a circular motion with the grooves, and see all these bubbles coming up? That shows you that it's working. It's bringing things up. So, Get this all the way around. Make sure you get the stuff deeply into here. A fingernail brush is gentle as long as you don't abuse it. It's not going to damage your records. So get this in there. Okay, you see all of these bubbles? Okay, now I'm gonna leave this here for three minutes. Okay, now three minutes have gone by. See how these bubbles have kind of like grouped together? It's doing its work. So, let's shake this dirt loose. Yes, we are going to scrub it again because the dirt's dissolved. We have to make sure that it gets away from the bottom of the grooves of every little bit of this record. So, do this again. Get those bubbles moving around. Get all that stuff out of there. All those fingerprints, hand oil. I don't know what's been on this record before I got to it, but I'm gonna get it off and make sure it's clean. Now, once you're done with that, take your absorbent cloth and wipe this fluid off. No need to get this completely dry. Just get the majority of this off of it. Okay? Now, this isn't dripping wet. I know that there are people that are very particular and they want you to flip this thing over so that you don't contaminate it with the other stuff, but you're going to be rinsing this off. So when you flip it over, do the same thing for side two. When you take a regular drop of water and put it on a dirty record, it beads up. It gets the, the record wet, but it doesn't go down deep into the grooves. Now, let's take a drop of our cleaning solution and put it on the record. And you will see that it acts just a little bit differently. It starts stretching and working its way into the grooves. It gets to the bottom of the grooves. It digs the dirt out and more effectively cleans your record so the end result is better sound. If you can look real close, you can see that the liquid is stretching out into the grooves. Now, if you have a new record, I recommend that you clean those as well. Why? Because it's just come from a pressing plant. There still could be some dust or some stuff that's in the air at the pressing plant that are there. And trust me, this does make a difference. Now, for this, you take the light 
rinsing fluid that we made with just distilled water and a couple drops of the X10. You put that on there. And uh, you might want to uh, use a fresh, clean fingernail brush for this. And move that stuff around. Get it in the grooves all the way. So, and you gotta be careful with how much you get on here. It doesn't have to be dripping all over the place. It just has to get every part of the record wet. And you don't need to let this sit for a long time. Just once it gets wet and it's on there for a little bit to get everything off, you go ahead and you get all of the excess off of here. And like I said, you repeat that for side two. Now that both sides have been washed and the excess water has been taken off of these, it's time to put it into the spin clean and do what they recommend. Three revolutions one way, three revolutions in the other. And take it out and let the excess drip away. Takes a little while sometimes, but your patience will be rewarded. Now it's time to stick it on the drying rack. Cardinal Fang, the rack. You place the record on the rack so that only wires are touching the very sides and not the playing surface. Take your fan and just have it on there so that it'll blow air evenly on both sides of the records. Record. <laughs> and every once in a while, you just take it and turn it a little bit so that it, any droplets that are on there keep on coming off. And if you're cleaning more records, go and scrub those while this is drying. Now, after a few minutes, your record's gonna be pretty much dry. There may be a couple of droplets on there. So take the cloth that came with the Spin Clean record cleaning system and just get those off. Soak up them little droplets. Then just a couple more seconds in front of the fan and that'll get everything off of there. And this record is just about as clean as it can possibly get. All you have to do now is get a brand new sleeve and slide the record in there and you are ready to listen to music. Okay, so here we are 18 minutes in and I've shown you how I clean and dry my records and prepare them for playing. And you may disagree with a lot of it. You may think, hey, this is neat. I may want to try that. Or you may want to uh, make your own version of this based on what I've done here. And what I've done is basically I've taken many different videos that I've seen on YouTube and compiled them into my own way with my own research. And this is how I clean and listen to records. Now, if you've got questions about this, please post them on the comments below. I will look at them over the next couple of weeks and I will post another video that will answer all of these questions. And I will also put a link to that video on the description of this one uh, once I do make that. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you had a good time. I had a great time. Hope you did too. And uh, thank you. Thank you for indulging me and in watching this video. Enjoy yourselves. Take care.